I can see you, man. I can see you. I see you and hear you clear. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm so excited to do this, man. And nice Thanks. to meet you via Instagram. And I'm grateful, man. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Hey, no problem. This is almost like a little bit of a surprise because I just posted today that I was going to be doing this with you. So to all my Suvaniacs that are watching right now, they're all super pumped to see you in the mix. I'm ready to go. <laughs> It's nice to meet you today. Grateful to have this time. Uh, my name is Jay Shetty, and I spend most of my life uh, writing, podcasting, uh, but I used to live as a monk. So I just launched uh, a new book, which came out about three weeks yep. ago. Uh, it's called Think Like a Monk. And it's every lesson that I learned from living in a monastery for three years and how those tools and practices can actually help us train our minds for peace and purpose every day. So I believe whether it's athletes, CEOs, entrepreneurs, stay at home, dads and moms, whatever you are, we spend most of our time up here. And yes. I really hope more people can create more peace and purpose in their mind so that they can have it in their life with all their interactions with their kids and their families and everything else. So that's been the most exciting thing that I've been up to lately. Uh, but I've just been trying to share all this ancient wisdom that I was fortunate enough to study in a way that we can actually live it and practice it. And, and I'd love to see how it's applied in more, in more sports as well. There's a lot of athletes that apply a lot of these principles in their game and, and you see it just changing how they, how they work. 150%. And by the way, I think the timing is absolutely perfect. Um, in this time, the mental space now and the space that you are, you are in mentally is so important. Um, with so much going on in the world, and even just personally, forget everything in the world, but just in everybody's lives, the way things are right now, it forces you to kind of just be in your own little bubble, right? And to understand where you are and things that you have going on. And I know that for me personally, when everything stopped and I went back to LA, I got to realize like all my habits, good habits, bad habits, you know, you, you see all these things and then you realize like, why do I always do that? And it's because <laughs> up here, there's just things going on up here. And yeah. I did a ton of yoga over the summer, which is great for me because I'm a forward person. I like to get up and get going all the time. So to slow things down and just think and breathe and just be in the moment. I, I watched the last, uh, the last dance documentary and Lindsay oh, hates when I talk. No, well, hold on. Lindsay, I mean, if I ask, if Lindsay catches me watching this thing one more time, no, she might break the TV. I've seen it probably 70 times. I've watched from episode one to, ten, like, I've watched the whole thing. And this whole thing about being in the moment and how Michael Jordan could be in the moment, people think that you can just, like, get up and, and do that. It, it is yeah. very difficult to, to be that way. Absolutely, man, especially under so much pressure. And, and that's how I see it, that, like, the pressure that someone feels on the court or, or a field or whatever it may be, it's the same kind of pressure that we have in life, whether it's like jobs, bosses, families. And it's funny because obviously athletes go through so much training, right? You don't, you don't go and play the game on the weekend if you haven't trained or the midweek game if you haven't trained. But in life, we don't train. We just play the game. So we're just playing the game of life without any training, without any... Uh, preparation. And when I got to really slow down, when I lived as a monk for three years, I felt like my whole life slowed down and all we did was train. And those three years were like training and the last seven years have been like the game and the exam. And, and I can truly say that these, these principles really work and these habits really work. And you know, whether it's yoga or whether it's meditation, to be present is an art and it's mm -hmm. something everyone can train themselves to do. It's not limited. You don't have to be a monk. You don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to be someone externally to want to live this way internally. Anxiety. I want to talk about that for a second because yeah. uh, for me personally, whenever I feel anxious or I feel anxiety, it's because of a lack of preparation. 
Yeah. So preparation for me and structure is key. Like I'm always very structured and I like to be prepared. And people always say, PK, you always seem like you never have a worry in the world. You're always smiling. You're always laughing. Well, that's because I take care of the stuff that I'm supposed to take care of. So when you know that you're doing the work that you're supposed to do, it's very easy to just to enjoy everything else that comes with it. But sometimes it's tough. If you're going through injuries, if you're battling sickness, if, you know, for a lot of people who have families, they can't, they, they're stuck in a certain void. They have to provide for their family. Maybe they can't get to that place that they want to get to. What's a simple way to deal with anxiety, a simple practice that someone can do to deal with that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's a, you know, that's really my focus is the goal is to find habits and practices that work for everyone who's busy living crazy lives, right? So one of my favorite ones is a lot of anxiety. The reason why we experience a PK is because our body is ahead of our mind. So how many times do you wake up in the morning and anyone who's listening and watching, you can write yes in the comments. How many times do you wake up in the morning and your body's running around, but your mind's like, ugh, I just want to be in bed, right? Your mind's okay. still bad. Or it's the opposite, where you wake up and your mind is racing and your body's like, ugh, I'm still tired. And so we experience this friction between the body and the mind. So a simple practice to relieve that friction is to breathe in for the same amount of time as you breathe out, and to literally count. So if I'm feeling anxious throughout the day because I'm rushing, I'm late, I, you know, I've got to send this email, got this to do, I've uh, got to, you know, something to figure out for my wife, then what I'll do is I'll just stop for a second and I'll just breathe in for a count of four and I'll breathe out for a count of four. And when you count in your mind and you breathe in line with that count, you align your body and your breath. And you can do this throughout the day. You don't have to take out 10 minutes to do it in the morning. You don't have to do it sitting down. You can do it while you're moving around, whatever you're up to. And so it's so important to just breathe and breath is so underestimated for helping deal with anxiety. Oh no, breathing is, is huge. I'll tell you this specifically, just to give one example. Yeah, please. Is, is playing sports, right? I, I, you know, I've managed to play in a Stanley Cup final. I played in almost a hundred playoff games, world juniors. And, you know, I played for a team like Montreal, which is, you know, a, a high pressured city where there's you're under a microscope all the time and you're always under that scrutiny and that pressure and breathing is so place of where there's just a lot going on and there's expectation i just focus on my breathing that's the only thing i think about is my breathing because you've already done the work your body your muscle memory is already there to do the act and this is just me talking about sports not talking yeah. about going through my day but yeah. for me personally like breathing is a huge huge element of you being able to perform at the top of it because it's controlled fury i call it, it you know what <laughs> i mean you can't just go out there and be like crazy you can bring that juice but it's got to be controlled yeah. One thing I want to talk about where I think that people put parents put a lot of pressure on their kids. People put a lot of pressure on themselves to perform and to be better every day. But one thing that no one really um, gives a lot of time for is gratitude, right? Mm -hmm. And giving gratitude to yourself and appreciating what your body has given you, what your mind has given you, what you have given yourself, what you've worked hard for. Can you talk about that a little bit and how to find that yeah. balance between pushing yourself and giving yourself gratitude? Yeah, I, I love that. What a beautiful question. It's, it's actually only possible to grow when you're being grateful at the same time. So growth and gratitude go hand in hand. So it's like, if you've grown to a certain stage, you can keep saying, oh, I just got to keep growing. I'm going to keep growing. But when you take that gratitude break, you actually incentivize yourself to grow more. Now, the amazing thing about gratitude is that it's not just this fluffy, cool word. It's literally scientifically proven to boost your mood. And so you actually gain more confidence and gain more insight into yourself when you feel grateful. So I'll give you an example. If you're grateful for the growth you've made, there's a lot more that comes from it. You now believe in yourself more because you know you can grow. You now realize that you're resilient because you've overcome challenges and pain. You now feel excited to get to the next level. But if you don't take that moment to be grateful and you just keep pushing yourself and trying to get yourself up there, you run out of energy. And gratitude reminds you that you're loved, that people believe in you, 
that people have done something for you. And when you look around your life and you go, wow, that coach believes in me, that friend believes in me, that partner believes in me, you start recognizing how many gifts you have and that boosts your next level of growth. So the way you look at gratitude and growth is grow a little, feel great, take a gratitude break. Grow some more, take a gratitude break. And the more you do that, you'll start them building up these steps rather than if you just push to grow. And the opposite's true too. If you just sit there and you're just grateful all the time, you'll get complacent. So you need both of them, right? It's not good to have just either or. You can't just grow or you can't just feel grateful. They go hand in hand. No, I, I think that that's spot on. I mean, that's one thing I've learned. You know, and I learned it at a very early age because, you know, in, in my sport, my profession, I moved away from home at 15. So I moved away from home at a very young age, left my family. I come from a big family, five kids, you know, two older sisters, two younger brothers. My younger brothers play hockey as well. But I was so used to being around my family and, and growing up in a West Indian home. I was used to that culture as well. And leaving that culture, going to a different culture not being in a West Indian uh, home, being 15 years old, you know, having a sense of like, I'm doing okay. I want to go out and work hard every day, but reflecting on the positive things that happened to me throughout my day. And I do that even after a bad game. You know, if I have a bad game, what were the, some of the positive things that I did? Because leading up to it, most of the time when there's something that happened that affected the game, it was me not being in the moment. It was me getting ahead of myself, not playing the clock, not understanding what was going on around me. But that's, you're human. It's a game of mistakes. But so that's is it. life. The life is a, is a game of, I mean, you got to make mistakes, right? Um, yeah. What does it mean to not judge the moment? Yeah, so this was something that we used to repeat to ourselves as monks. Yeah. Of, is what happens in our lives today is we judge every person and every moment in the snapshot that we see. So imagine this, imagine you walked into a movie theater, but you walked in late and you see a scene in a movie and it looks like that this guy is chasing this other guy and the guy being chased is a bad guy and the guy doing the chasing is a good guy. But you then watch the whole movie and you watch it from the beginning another day and you realize that you got it all wrong. Actually, the guy being chased was the good guy and the guy doing the chasing was the bad guy. And so when we judge the moment in our lives, we label it, we put it in a little box and then we feel like that moment is always gonna be labeled a bad moment or that is a bad person or that is a negative thing. And when we do that, we stop ourselves from allowing the fact that we're growing and evolving, that moment is growing and evolving. How many times have you had it, PK, where a blessing turns into a curse and a curse turns oh. into... Hey, and... every, every curse has to be a blessing. Totally, totally. It but has to be. It, if you label it a curse or you say, this is a... I'll, I'll give you another example. So many people read their horoscopes or they have people tell them about times. And I have so many people that I speak to that say, oh, this is meant to be a bad year for me. This is meant to be a bad... Yes bad month for me. If you live like that, you're creating that cycle of this is meant to be a bad month. So now you're just going to spot bad things. Uh, and that happens to all of us. So when monks say don't judge the moment, you allow the moment to actually grow and evolve into a blessing and something better, rather than putting in a little box that says that's a negative thing. And I don't want it in my life. So not judging allows you to not make something a curse. Well, it's pretty simple. I, I never think there's any such thing as a bad day. I think there's yep. challenging days. I yep. think there might be a more challenging month, challenging moments, but I, I don't see anything as such as a bad day. As long as I'm alive and I'm breathing and I have an opportunity to get better and learn, I, I think you have to accept that challenge. And that's the challenge that you're accepting in life is that you have to be willing to roll with the ups and downs of it. So I think that's great.